think I'm live. Hi, it is Alexa Hampton, and this is 52 Weeks, and um, I am being joined today by the wonderful, did I just write Vian Dom? That's not what I meant. By um, Miguel Flores Viana, Von Dom Press. And, oh, I see what I'm doing. Ugh, guys, I know. How many times have we done this? Um, there we go. And here we can start. Yay. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hello. How are you? Miguelito. How are you, Alexita? <laughs> we just need a little Margarita. <laughs> we do. As a, a, we, we really cemented our friendship at the bar at uh, Rosa Mexicano, which exactly. no longer exists in that location. Really? Oh. Oh, my yeah, God. It closed. COVID closed it. But Oh, really? Oh, amazing. Well, that's sad. I'm sorry, because everybody was so nice, and they had delicious food, yeah. and, and it was well, almost like home away from home. It was home away from home. How so, listen, I want you to tell everybody about your incredible and crazy career change, uh, because it was so epic. I mean, it's, it's obviously like in the same world of design. You've always been in the world of design. But you really, it's like you answered a calling. Do you feel that way? Well, um, it was very funny because um, I, how it happened was kind of strange. Uh, I um, was um, the, uh, I was sort of heading the editorial office of Veranda in New York City. Uh, and I had that lovely boss, um, Lisa Newsom. Yeah. She was in Atlanta and I was in, in, in New York City. And um, I, I needed a new scouting picture because, you know, editors, they're always going around sure. and, and I needed a new one. So I went to B&J, you know, that famous photography shop on 30... B&H. B&H, there you B &H, go. B&H, yeah. B&H, yeah on 34th Street. And um, I went to buy one and I sort of lingered and I ended up buying, um, I ended up buying a, a professional camera instead, a professional film camera, uh -huh. instead of a scouting digital camera. And I'll never forget, it was a Sunday. And as I walk out of the shop, I said to myself, well, Miguel, now you have to be a photographer. And um, really? yes, and so um, what I did is I did because I didn't even know how to use the, the camera. It was a Hasselblad. I didn't know how to use it. And um, so what I did is first I um, hired um, um, someone to help me work out how you use a camera. <laughs> so, Yeah, for two weekends, we went out, I went to visit Marianne McEvoy, and I used sure. her house as sort of a location, and then she has this Right, because there's, there's nothing at Marianne McEvoy's house that isn't photographable. Absolutely, yeah. including the owner, of course. So then, um, and so we did a few photographs there for that weekend, and then, and you know, Ma Marianne, how patient, she even put up the lady who was helping me use the camera in her house and she made us food. I mean, she, I was mean, so like very professional. So then I, um, and, and so the next weekend we repeated the whole experience somewhere else. And then after that, I said, well, now I have to start taking pictures. So I took pictures on my own for nine months. And exactly around nine months after I had bought that camera, I resigned my job. And I said, well, now I'm gonna be a photographer. And, it was and what June. year was that? It was 2008, I believe, 2000, 2007, there you go. So um, that year, uh, so that was June, and I got my first job in August. 
And my first job was a book. Can you believe it? I so can a, believe it, but only because I know your photos. So it was a book for the um, Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. So I worked um, for one whole week. And can you imagine how nervous I was flying to Houston on that, for that first week? I was yes. like a ball of nerves. And then, uh, so it was one week on and then one week back home and then another week. So when I went back for the second week, the art director says to me, I think you've been lying to me. And I said, why? And I said, I don't think you, oh, because I had told her that I had been a photographer for a year already. Uh -huh. So she says, I don't think you've been a photographer for a year. I think you've been a photographer for longer. So thank God. Anyway, so that, that was it. And I sort of never looked back. Um, it, and it's I, been very I, nice. I mm -hmm. do feel, well, okay, let's talk about some of your books. You've done Oat Bohemians. You've yeah. done, uh, oh, well, sorry, there's car noises in the background. That's my husband peeling out of the driveway to go to storage. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a Wandering Eye. Yes. Um, but you've also done as you were just saying, this book for the museum in Texas, you've done a lot of books with people. I've done a lot. I've done, and I'm going to plug the latest one. Yeah, do plug them because they're so beautiful. This one is the latest one. It's the oh, yes, one. yes. I just saw that on Instagram. Natalie Farman Farmer, that everybody should get it because it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and not she went to Brown. Because of my photography. It's because and she, of... And she and Markham Roberts were roommates at Brown. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. what I've heard. She's, uh, she's one of the people that I've become the closest since I moved to London. Um, uh, she, she's a wonderful person, but also she is incredible in her passion for um, what she's doing. She designs fabrics and her fabrics are mostly inspired in the sort of interiors of France, Persia and, yeah. um, and Russia. And so that's where she draws the most of it, her inspiration. And uh, the book reflects that. So it's very, very interesting. And, mm -hmm. and it's a lovely, lovely book. As I said, it has nothing to do with my photography. Anybody could have photographed it the way I did. There she is. It's just, it's just the, the, the way she has presented her world is really wonderful. Yeah. It's, so. it's great when people tell those stories about fabrics because at least for me, I become so disassociated frequently with the history of the mm -hmm. fabrics I'm using because, you know, I go to the d and I walk into a building and there they all are. And you forget all of those beautiful stories and the genesis of how these patterns came to be and the dyes and the, the content. So it's very exciting. Yeah, and believe me with, with her because Natalie is actually an intellectual. I mean, she For sure. reads about everything. She investigates, she researches, and she has this, next time you're in London, you should definitely come and see her because she has this vast collection, not only of pieces of fabrics, but she collects um, um, ethnic um, uh, jewelry, of course, but she also collects ethnic sort of um, dresses from places mm -hmm. like the Republic of Georgia, Uzbekistan. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So it's really an incredible place to go visit. And of course, she is so charming and so nice that it's, it's really nice to be around her. So I hope Natalie realizes that you've just invited me to go to her house and into her closet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit weird. I will tell her what to stir. I'll tell her to, to, to get one. She, get, she gets these Romanian cakes. Mm -hmm. from a Romanian bakery here that look like a screwdriver because they're kind of like this, uh -huh. but they're delicious. So I'm going to tell her to actually get that. And then after that, we'll go for a margarita somewhere. <laughs> okay. How about that? <laughs> okay. She's crying with laughter. She's like, Haha, none of this will be happening. Um, so I don't know if you read the post about, oh, well, first you were hacked. And I'm yeah, very so sorry. And that's very stressful. I mean, um, so I've been off for of Instagram for two months almost, but it's actually been amazing. I have read, I'm on my seventh book since that. Yeah. So it's been really nice. And, and what book? Here, right now I'm re reading a book on the Crusades, but I have read about travel books. I have read um, 
there's an amazing book called The Swerve. And the, the book uh, tells the story of um, a man um, who in the 1400s discovered um, a manuscript in a sort of in a library in, in, in Germany. And the manuscript is called The Nature of Things. And it was written by someone called Lucretius. And Lucretius talks for the first time, or it's the first time that we hear talks about atoms, for example. Mm -hmm. And in it, according to the book, this little manuscript that this man found, his, the, the, man, the man who found the manuscript, his name was Poggio uh, Brangiolini, I think. And he, um, this, little manu this little manuscript that he found and that he copied and he distributed, in a way, um, gave the ideas that sort of things are made out of atoms and, uh, um, and the whole thing. So in a way, he ended up influencing people like Einstein in the 20th century. Sure. So it's a, a, actually an amazing book because it sort of changed the history of the world, um, which until then we were full of fears and, and we believed in magic and this and yeah. that. And uh, so it's really interesting. So it's called The Swerve. I recommend it highly. So this is the interior life of a photographer of, of great acclaim. Uh, <laughs> you have wide interests and it's funny that you would be reading something about, you know, the deep past because I do see the deep past when I see your photographs. Yeah. Even though you could be photographing something that was, you know, in on, on this porch right now, the way you capture things, it looks like they've been there forever and that they have personality and they have, you, you know, that there's, there's meaning to them. So that yeah. they're, that they're made of atoms. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> you. Uh, so yeah, is that, I, I, I mean, it, it feels very philosophical. Do you have a philosophical bent? No, actually, because I actually have to really concentrate. No. For example, when I was reading that book, they said towards the end of the book, it, this, they talk a lot about philosophy and I really have to concentrate because I'm not very much, um, someone who tends to philosophize. I, I like history. At least or, maybe not verbally. Huh? Maybe. Maybe not uh, verbally. Yeah. Because through uh, your so, eye. Hmm? With my eye. Through your maybe. eye. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. But I, I like the passage of time and I like when the, when homes, rooms, buildings, landscape reflects that. Um, I, I, I find that very um, comforting, if you know, yeah. to sort of, to see that, to see that something has come before us and uh -huh. that we have learned something from them. Um, and that there perhaps is a guarantee of continuation. Exactly, absolutely, uh -huh. yeah. Um, I think we, because I think, you know, we all have to, um, we all have to draw inspiration from something. And, and some people draw inspiration from different things. I draw inspiration, I guess, from the past a lot. I, I, I love that. And I love reading about it. And I love, because that's how I learned about the way that I see the world. Yeah. yeah. Um, tell us about the apartment behind you. How many, how many different places have you lived? Where are how you many, from originally? Well, I have lived in, I have lived in, let me have, I have lived in South America, those continent, and then I have lived in Africa. I have lived in North America and Europe. I've never lived in Asia. Um, and, um, and I never been to Antarctica and I never <laughs> been to Australia. Wow. You're such a deadbeat. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, I like, well, so this is the living room in my house. Mm -hmm. And I just realized looking at the screen. So there's a, you can see like a, yeah, the pink thing. Yes. So that's a uh, very old drawing and I keep it covered so that it does. So the sun does it? Yeah. Well, so can you so give us a little it's, peek up under its skirt? It's, it's, it's very nice. meta. You know, you could, you could have a blank canvas, a blank one there, and right. have it covered in fabric, and no one would know the difference. Is it a tree of life? It's a tree, yeah. yeah. It's, and I bought it in Rome a long time ago. And um, I should have, I mean, I normally, and I should have done it today, I'm sorry. So normally when people come to the house, I roll up the fabric. So 
you can see the thing, but I should have yeah. done it. I'm sorry, I apologize. No, uh, I, I like seeing that. It's someone who's caring for his, his prized possessions. I, well, I don't like um, the, you know, those, they, they glass with IV protection, uh -huh. IVU protection, but I don't somehow like it. I know someone in London has the most amazing collection. Of <laughs> it's UV. I like the idea of IV protection. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> like UV, in, yeah. UV. In your there vein. You but yeah. no, that's UV. <laughs> I, I don't even like it. I mean, I, of course, I wear it in my sunglasses, but yeah. um, so, and also don't like the, the glass that doesn't reflect. I like reflections on glass. That's fascinating. And that's something that sometimes bring me, brings me a little bit of problems with some of my clients because they say, well, can you get rid of the reflection? Of course uh -huh. one can get rid of the reflection, but I think sometimes the reflections on the glass actually add something to whatever totally. is behind the glass. A little bit of magic. And I am shopping for antiques, um, notably at an antique store called OJ Plu in mm -hmm. New York, you know, on 61st Street, mm -hmm. whenever they take a photograph of one of their mirrors, you just obviously, by virtue of the fact that it's in an antique store, you see the things that are in the antique store. Mm -hmm. And I always think, uh, you know, I can barely look at the mirror itself because it all looks like an a piece of artwork to me. Uh, you know, yeah. it looks like a Walter Gay of a mirror showing a reflection. Absolutely, uh, yeah. So I, I do love those things. They're secret stories, like... Uh, like the Arnolfini wedding portrait. Yeah, exactly. Where oh, you get amazing. a little, yeah, yeah. yeah, where you get yeah. the little bullseye mirror telling you secret clues. What's happening, and yeah, or like, the, what is the other one? The famous one, Las Meninas. What is? Yes, yes, Las Meninas. Yeah, um, Velasquez. You know, they're like books, entire books to yeah. say who's reflected, not reflected, yeah. and yeah, I like that. Well, well, well I remember I going to Madrid with my father for my sweet sixteen. Mm. And he, we walked to Las Maninas and he goes, this is considered the best painting in the world. <laughs> I was like, oh. oh good. <laughs> it's such a funny, you know. Well, if your father said it. I'm yeah, sure I was like, well, I guess, yeah. well, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, that's an amazing museum. I love that, brother. Um, you know, the other thing I love is um, sometimes you go to houses that are filled with beautiful things and then and I'm actually thinking, for example, of Robert Kine. Yeah. And then he says, oh, let me just, you know, he say, oh, I have, for example, he say, oh, I have a little stone that I got in Ethiopia. Let me show it to you. And then he opens his cabinet and you think, oh, my God. Yeah. If I thought that whatever I saw outside was amazing, look at what is inside the cabinet. And I love this kind of people who are able to do that kind of thing, to sort of hide the best and only show it from time to time. I mean, and there are quite a few of them and I, I love that little surprise that they, they, they it, do. It, um, have you read the, the um, oh, come on, the Edmund Duvall book? No, you not have The yet, Hair no. with the Amber Eyes? Yeah, 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 no, I okay. haven't. That is your next book because it's going to speak to this story and it's going to speak to, to how you approach art. Um, I will. I, I will read it. Yeah, I, mean, I know that it's been kind of an amazing story, and it's been a very successful book. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and it's all told the device through which the story is told, which is based on World War II or is happening during World War II, um, and and a little bit before and after. It's following a family, but it's following a collection of items, uh, and that's the means by which the story is told. So you will you will love that. But I want to talk more about the wall behind you. So yes. for the man who I do you do you set up these um, these compositions like do you use your photographer's eye or do you change the way you look at things when it's on a wall? Huh. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. This is hmm. ponder. <laughs> I, I I presume um so whatever I have has some sort of a memory attached to it. Mm -hmm. So some of the things say in the background mm -hmm. um, are, I guess, important. Some of them have no value, but I love the story behind it. Yeah, it's a value to you. And that's a value to me. So when I do put things together, 
No, I think it's a bit more haphazard. And I don't think I'm thinking of a photograph when... when yeah, I, you're, there's no composition. Yeah. It's not composition heavy. Because, I yeah. mean, it does look composed, for sure. Like, as I look at the two things underneath the pink painting, you know, that's a very precise um, yeah. way you've put them. Yeah. There are two tiles, 18th century tiles, um, one is Portuguese and the other one is, is Moroccan. Azulejo? Azulejo? Azulejo. Azulejo is in Portuguese, Azulejo in Spanish. Okay. I actually want, I'm going to go and grab something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please story. show and tell. It's, it's one of the best uh, stories of lockdown. Oh, good. We need happy stories of lockdown. So, one of the best things I did during lockdown is. I developed this relationship with uh, this woman that I always like very much. Really? Uh, but that she has an amazing eye and she had the best little uh, hidden antique shop in London. And um, she had always amazing stuff. Um, mostly just objects rather than furniture and I would always buy from her especially at around Christmas time and um, for she, your own Christmas presents uh, for yourself for, no for to give for people friends. and for myself yeah, yeah. and um, during lockdown one day she um, posted something that um, one object that she owned so I texted her and I said are you selling it and she said, let me think about it or something like that. So to make the long story short, um, she decided, yeah, she was going to sell it. And um, I bought it. And because it was locked down and because it was quite strict, we worked it out that she would come to, I live near a square called Kensington Square. Sure. Uh, and she would come shopping for food near there. So she would drive to Kensington Square and I would meet her at Kensington Square. So, so what, this is like this is like a, a cold drop. Yeah. A spy exactly. novel, right? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, my shop dealers, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the bench. So one very a cold drop, Saturday morning, I um I go to meet her with the I I I with I go with I think I had to make a transfer because she didn't want cash because at the time nobody wanted to touch money. I mean cash so i go and she's waiting for me in her car she says she points to me to the booth she opens the booth and in the booth is what i wanted to buy and the, what i wanted to buy was this, uh, yes this. yes i want to buy and Beautiful. so um they are all sort of 18th century century sort of wax seals right in talios uh and um i bought it and her name is and I'm telling you this because you should contact her because she has amazing stuff. Her name is Valerie Arieta. And she's Valerie Arieta? Arieta. She's American from California. She's been living here, um, I think, most of her adult life. Her son is English. He was born here. She has really great taste. Um, she's a lovely person to chat with. So because this was so successful, I, I felt so... James Bondy almost sort of grabbing it from the yeah, 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 car and then we waved at each other and so we started this thing that every Monday so I would email what do you so have how did you pay this? her though hmm? how did you pay her no so transfers you know bank transfers oh, okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> um, we started this thing that we um, every every week we would she would send me pictures I would say for example um, I'm looking for stones. What stones do you have? Because I like, you know, those sort of flint stones mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Yeah. And so every week, uh, all the way from the end of March till June, every Saturday we would meet and, I, and she would give me what, what, what I bought. So, well, I hope you're not going to go into debtor's prison over this new no, habit. No, I hope not. no, no, no. It, it's, she's actually, actually one of the things about him. Valerie is that she's so very fair on her pricing. Yeah. And uh, so it, it was really, really lovely. So that's kind of the best, one of my best sort of lockdown stories of this period. Millie, he said the name of the shop was Valerie Arieta. 
Arietta, and she now deals for hi Millie, our friend Millie, yeah. who I miss so much. Um, she um, deals from home now, uh, and her husband apparently is a very well-known um, dealer of African art here in London. Oh, nice! Um, so symbiotic. It, um, yeah. It's it it's to hear you tell this story and the relationship, and then to hear that she's very fair with her with her. Um, wears i think there's something that is much more soulful when you buy something and you understand that the the dealer has helped you get it now i don't mean give it away but they they see the love in your eye or the passion of the homeowner who's buying it and it's not just transactional Absolutely. Like they're, they're excited to give over it's almost like all right, this is going to a good home. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. And, and I'm then, sure you do, you have a lot of those relationships too. I, I love my dealers. I mean, I love them, I love them, I love them. And, yeah. that, and, I'm, I'm a, and I'll buy things without, you know, there's this great, this great um, souvenir, unsurprisingly, souvenirs of the great tour, of the grand tour man in Amsterdam Mm -hmm. And I think that may be the name of his Instagram handle. And he had a beautiful plaster, um, not even plaster. It's like a, a it's denser. It's more cementy of um, Nike of salmon thrace. And I, I just clicked and, <laughs> and she flew my way. But even <laughs> that, like, it felt like a relationship. No, it's, 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 it's a thrill. And I mean, I, sometimes I get nervous. I say, oh, God, I shouldn't have bought that. But once I was actually photographing the uh, the house of the illustrator Pierre Letan in, mm -hmm. in Paris. And um, he was a very special man with an incredible eye. And um, he had this, his house was this kind of little cabinet of curiosities filled with the most amazing things almost all of them small and displayed in really wonderful way, but not in a showy way. Sure. And um, I asked him, Pierre, do you feel guilty when you buy things? And he says, oh, no, 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 no. I love buying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they will, they will have a life. Yeah. Um, how, how different is your house in London from your other grown-up houses? How, how has your style been changing? Um, I think it, 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 it's funny because someone I went to kinder, I went to school from kindergarten till seventh grade with was here a year ago. And he said to me, oh, this is just like your parents' house. And, and you're um, like, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in a, in a way it is true because I think my parents also have this sort of passion for things and they like probably different things that I do, but it was this kind of compulsion to, in a way, build almost a geography of your life on mm -hmm. the walls where you, that sort of protects you. And, and that's what I think it's, it is. My houses always have reflected where I've been, uh, who I, I have met. Um, because although, yes, I tend to buy things, but I don't buy for the sake of buying. I always want something with it. A connection. A connection. There you go. So in that sense, the style hasn't really evolved. What has happened now is that because when you live in Europe, you're much closer to different type of countries. Now my collections of things have gone from, I don't know, Peruvian silver to um, Greek, you know, sort of country sticks, if you know what I mean, country, uh, walking, sure. walking sticks from someone I bought in the country kind of thing. Um, so it's a little bit more eclectic, I, I would uh -huh. say. Uh, but still, I like color a lot. Um, I, I'm... That's something I have always liked. I feel that your photographs are very colorful. Yeah, and no, I like color. You, yeah. you, I, I want, um, and I, I went and took the same picture you did because I had to, because I needed to have the picture on my camera roll of the, um, the Altem. 
mm -hmm. in Rome. You took mm -hmm. that spectacular shot of the second floor mm -hmm. with the great terracotta swirling yeah. mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the and the trees. And I, I, yeah, I just I could I can tell a photo of yours a mile away. Oh, well, and they're yeah. they're I'm just such a fan. It's really and uh, as somebody who loved drawing, you know, photography is so different. Yeah, it is. It's, it's funny, you know, people, you know, you'll be with someone and you'll take the picture of the same thing and it looks completely different. And, oh, and uh, it's, um, and I don't know how that happens, but it happens. Uh, and it also, I, I just finished doing a book which will come out next year. And um, um, I was very lucky that uh, I was, um, working the, the, the stylist, quote unquote. He, he was much more than that. He was, was Peter Copping the-, the Oh, sure, who, who used to, he's a fashion designer and exactly. then was at Oscar de la Renta. Yeah, and he, um, and I said to him, you know, please point out anything you see because I know that, for example, I, I tend to see rooms sometimes as complete. And I know just from looking at his Instagram, that he tends to look at detail very much. And I guess if you're a fashion designer, you have to look at detail because you have to know how the sleeve falls or how you hold the waist, that kind of thing. And well, it, it was very interesting because, you know, we would walk into a room and I would say, ah, look at that amazing chandelier. And I said, yeah, but did you see the base of the, you know, the fireplace? And, it yeah. was really nice. So it was nice to collaborate that way. He so wasn't that, a stylist. He was just there. We were right, together. right. Almost a, like a, a choreographer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There you go. So um, somebody's idea. saying, and this, this dovetails into this question, it says, how do you pick pieces separately for living space or, and for spaces? Because it's tough to put them together harmoniously. So what's the trick? So I think the way you're describing it, it in your house is that the trick is not to try. Yeah, the trick that is- this is telling a story of your life and travels yeah. and, it, and it assembles itself. And how about you? How do you do it? Oh, I, I um, you know, my father, his first job was for David Hicks. So I'm a big fan of the quote unquote tablescape. Mm. Um, I, still, I still can be very rigid and I can also be, uh, you know, I still have a growing to do. I know I'm an old lady now, but I still need to, you know, sometimes I'll look at something and I'll say, that's beautiful, I wanna have it. But I, the older I get, the more I wanna do what you're describing, which is to engage with it. Like, mm -hmm. why do I like it? Like, I love, I love armory. I love helmets and, and things like that. And I think there's like, there's a little bit of my love of Rome. Um, there's a little love of pageantry. There's a little love of, you know, the Spartan helmet in Bill Blass's apartment mm -hmm. when he lived on Sutton. But I, I want to, I want to be less arbitrary mm -hmm. and definitely for my clients, I want to help them tap into, you know, what gets you going? What mm -hmm. are you excited about? Because that, that invariably makes it much more beautiful. Yeah, no, because it's personal. Absolutely, and I think that's that's I think the trick for me because um, when I see houses that have been um, decorated by a, a professional, that uh, the the trick, the tipping point, is one that they can actually tap into the private life of the client mm -hmm. and somehow develop make it, it theirs, and make it yeah, their house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes they they know what they may like, but they don't know how to express it, if you know what I mean. Uh, oh, I, I'm counting on it. Yeah. I mean, every decorator on, on earth wants the homeowners not to know how to do that. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, you yeah. want to be hired. Yeah. Um, your book, Oat Bohemians, I mm -hmm. thought was especially interesting for me as an American, because mm -hmm. it it's suggestive of so much history and 
lineage, and I don't mean that in terms of aristocracy, but in terms of actual like houses being passed down or mm -hmm. items being cherished from one person to another person in their family. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I found it very magical. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, and and grand and ambitious and aspirational. And it's very fairy tale. It's not an easy. It, it's a great book because um, that's a very specific thing. You know, not everybody can go out and do that. Hmm. Your subjects. Well, I, I've been lucky that I have been exposed because of work and travels to different people and. Um, I think I even say that in the book, and, and there are certain people who, you know, there's, there, there's different type of poetry. Mm -hmm. And some poetry is actually created in a room. They, I'll, I'll never forget, I was a very young assistant in New York City. And uh, my boss took me to, um, to a meeting. He was having a meeting with a photographer. And, um, in the photographer's house. And um, we walked into this house in, in the village, in, in, in the West Village. And there I was, you know, as a kid, sort of out of school, uh, just out of school, who have spent most of my life in South America, Africa, and sort of getting drunk in Paris sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I walk into this house. It's very romantic, place. that history. <laughs> there is something amazing in this house. And I don't know what it was. It was a way that, and it was a house. I, I didn't even know who the person we were meeting. I didn't know who he was. But it was actually the house of Francois Allard in, in, mm -hmm. in the West Village. And sometimes you walk into houses like- Another, house of, another magician photographer. Absolutely. I mean, he's like the biggest master of them all. Um, he, and there's just some, it's almost like chemistry, you know, things just come together at times. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and some people know how to do it over and over for themselves and also for clients, yeah. if you know what I mean. I think Stephen Gambrell, uh, certainly Markham Roberts, there's a, you know, Markham can pick up like a twig. It's very frustrating and just put it in some jar and it looks like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, and I'm like, screw you, Mark. <laughs> you know, like, but you are, you, so can you. No, you I love, I love it. what I do. But you know, when you, when you see somebody doing, uh, able to do something like, like that, that maybe you couldn't, you prize it all the more. Just like, okay, so we're talking about Mary McAvoy she too has just magic surrounding her all the time. Oh, absolutely. Marianne and and like, she must have an IV drip of crystal meth because I've never seen somebody so productive. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I've been, I mean, Marianne is almost like a sort of an older sister, if you know what I mean. I, mean, she, I have a very, I'm very close to her. I think you mean younger sister, Miguel. I don't think she Yeah, yeah, my that. younger sister. We're yes, all you your younger sisters. She's the baby <laughs> in the family. And um, uh, so, um, and she was first my boss and she opened my eye to so many things. Um, and um, she, um, and when she retired, when she went to live in the countryside, she, um, we became, I made it, I really made it a point of becoming her friend. So I've been- Ooh, how stalkery. Oh, uh, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Marianne, the, um, so I, um, and it's absolutely amazing. There's so many times that she's been there with 10 people for dinner and everybody leaves the house at two o'clock in the morning, rather happy, if you know what I mean. Yes, yes. And you know, the next morning at seven o'clock in the morning, she's Miguelito, breakfast is ready. And like, you have to like, you cannot, not. You can't You're like, how did I not leave the house? <laughs> no, 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 no. She's right there yeah. <laughs> with yeah. a coffee. And <laughs> it's the crystal milk. That's one thing. Marion is amazing at everything, except yeah. making coffee. Ah. Wow. Uh, don't, Spoken like a well-traveled you man. Huh? Yeah. Um, so strong, so strong, you have no idea. Oh, well, that's not bad. Weak coffee is much more offensive than strong coffee. No, I think this, Marianne's coffee is even stronger than Greek coffee. 
Uh, no, no, I said weak. Oh, weak. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 no, no, yeah. No, I'm not into Greek coffee. Uh, my husband, having Greek man that he is, grew up in Italy, so he is very judgmental when it comes to coffee. And he, he essentially thinks I drink brown water. Um, <laughs> you know, I like deli coffee. I like New York deli coffee. Oh, I like it, it hits I like just it. the right balance, but but it's very peasanty. Uh, but I'm at peace with that. So so as I look at your books, as I look at your your lifeline, uh, you know, your 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 bio. And uh, and everything that you're saying, it feels like travel is such a core part of who you are and your creativity. Um, yeah, it's it's been it's been like that since I guess the day I was born. My parents were up. I mean, they were like, it was the the were they was in in politics? Is that why you were moving? No, no, no. My father was a surgeon. And um, he, I, I, they, they stayed home. They would just send me to school in different places, that kind of thing. And really, they sent you to Africa? Yeah, uh, yeah. By the way, my husband was also <laughs> in boarding school in Africa. Where were you? I was in the Cape Province in South Africa. That is so funny. He was at St Albans, which where is, is I don't know where it is. I've never Saint been. St Albans. There. I think that's Saint in, Albans. in Johannesburg, no. You tell me. I know he's told me. I just forget. I, I I have not been to Africa, but I cannot, I will not set foot on that continent without Egypt being the first place I go. Oh, yeah, you have to. Yeah. It, it is, in my entire life, I've wanted to go to Egypt. And for whatever reason, I have not made it there. And it's killing me. Yeah. It's, uh, you have to. It's, I know, you know, I never made it until last year. And I grew up with, so, so my parents were into, really into uh, traveling. My father loved India. Desperately. Oh, he was India mad about India. India. My mother hated it. Really? Oh, hated it. Too she hectic? Went, huh? Too hectic? It was just too much, I guess. You know, she just, just didn't, didn't, but she loved Egypt. She was mad about Egypt. But I never went. I mean, I, I and until last year, and I went with, um, I went to do an assignment with um, Martina uh, for Cabana Magazine. Montedori, yeah. Martina Montedori for Cabana Magazine. And I absolutely loved it. And um, I went back this past January. And again, it's, it's an amazing place. And, I, I, and, and what you have to do, Alexa, is get a boat. And right go, and do do, do the, the Nile to Luxor yeah. Yeah. and um and get a private boat go with your husband and your kids and just you know just you the family it, it's the most amazing uh, thing and an art historian I'm not yeah. I'm not going anywhere and that's why everything when I travel is we bulk up on art historians my kids hate it well actually they love it because they're lovely people that we end up uh, meeting with. But, oh, somebody's asking me to reintroduce you. This is the very famous, wonderful <laughs> photographer, Miguel Flores Viana. Hi. From London. Um, it's getting, what, it's getting, is it getting cold there or not? In New um, York? It is, it's definitely turned into fall. It, it, I'm, I'm out east right now. Mm. And for, for as long as I can remember Labor Day, boom, it gets cold. It's yeah. like, it's like it knows the calendar. It's almost silly. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, uh, it's getting here, it's getting really fall. Um, it's, it's nice. I love this time of the year. Yeah. And it's you not- like, Do you like the dreariness, the darkness? I don't mind. Yeah. You know, the one thing that sometimes I get, I don't like about England is actually rainy summers. Then I get bothered. Because to me, summer should be summer, you know. Um, and if it's too rainy, then I get like. And so when my English friends they say they all go to Scotland, talking in August, I'm like, uh-uh, just <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> well, you said you dream of Greece almost every day, yeah, right? That's, that's, that's when you want to be in place. Greece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love Greece. It's kind of, I don't know. It's, I don't, I don't know if I have. I don't know. Greek blood, yeah. There's I have no Greek blood. That I know. 
but I just absolutely love the country. I feel yeah. very at home there. It smells like home. Yeah. I love the food and I love the sea, of course. Yeah. 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 I sometimes feel that the food is a little too clean, but I'm allowed to be that way because I was weaned on McDonald's. Um, <laughs> what, what, um, what's your favorite museum? What are some of your favorite museums if you can't pick one? So, I want to know everything that goes into the head of the person that makes your beautiful work. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I love the Prado. I love the Prado, love the Prado, obviously for what it has, but I also love it because it's so well edited. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is no junk in the Prado. Whereas sometimes you go to those big, big encyclopedic museums and there's incredible stuff, but then there's a lot of rooms that you just want to walk yeah, yeah. fast by. Um, then, having said that, there is a museum which probably people will think that um, um, where there are no great masterpieces, but where there is a great uh, sort of view of the life of a country, and that that museum is at Tetrakov in Moscow. I love um, what it's called, Petrokov? Te Tetrakov, the Tetrakov oh, Gallery. Tetrakov, yes. Yeah. And they wait, didn't, have the, hmm? wait, did you say it was in Moscow? In Moscow, yeah. I saw it. Yeah. And they, t they sent that collection to the Vuitton Museum. Oh, did they? I didn't they know did. That. That, oh. that man had been, he, he didn't, isn't he the one who, I mean, I feel like I'm right, but obviously I'm, I might not be. But I feel that he is the man who commissioned the dance from Matisse. No, I think you're talking about the guy who had that amazing collection of, of, of uh, um, impressionistic art. He was a Russian who collected Matisse. Yes, yeah. I am. So that's, that's another museum. Okay, the one, down the street I think that's in Moscow. The State Museum of Moscow or something. The Tetrakov Gallery, I think was initiated by someone called Mr. Tetrakov and he had and, and this museum has the most amazing collection of this type of paintings that I love paintings in which I show the life of Russians throughout mostly the, uh -huh. the, the sort of the, the 19th century and early 20th century so there are paintings of, uh, of how the aristocrats lived how the peasants live. Right. The uh, so side. Natalie and, Farman Farma, I bet, has been with you to that. Oh, I'm sure you. she's been there quite a few times, I'm sure. Uh, I, and so she, I'm sure, would be able to tell you of different um, pieces of art that are there. I cannot remember. I just remember going through it and having in front of me this sort of vision of what Russia was like in the 19th century, and I loved it. I love museums that you know, I love museums that have amazing stuff. So as I said, you know, you go to the Met and it's the most incredible museum. But I also love museums that tell you sort of obscure things like, for example, how the Russians lived in the 20th century, right, right. in the 19th century. Right. Um, I, so I love that. I, um, and, and, and I love actually that kind of paintings as well, you know, uh, paintings that show, it's something a school of painting that especially developed in the 19th century Sort of like the Bonard, life, you a know, kind of Bonard-looking painting. I'm sorry. Like Bonard. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah, you know, like the, all those patterns and yeah, soft. Yeah, yeah. We are, yeah. and I sort of think. We are. That's what I was thinking. We are. I love, but Bonard also did the same thing. So I love sort of seeing that kind of thing, and and, and so I love museums like that. Um, what else do I like? Do you like the Sone? I know the Sone is every decorator's favorite museum, but. Yeah, it's, that's an it absolute is. mass. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's yeah. so incredible. It's, Speaking of uh, objects and even though he's, I, I didn't realize he was such a nasty guy until- Oh, that I didn't know, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he was a nice guy. But anyway, we all can be forgiven because his museum is amazing. No, the museum is um, amazing. I think he was so, for his time, he was sort of, because I mean, that's the time when, you know, sort of Northern Europeans were discovering um, uh, the South, you know, the, 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 the beauties of classical uh, architecture mm -hmm. of the classical civilization. And I think he was so much ahead of everybody in that terms. Um, and also because she was such a collector. And yeah. what I like about it is one thing is to be a collector 
be a billionaire and be a collector. Another thing is to be someone normal and still <laughs> be able to put your money aside and, and get an amazing collection of things, which is what he did. Um, um, yeah, love- okay, we have two questions. Let me, let me answer the first one. What design museum are you talking about? We're talking about the John Stone Museum, which is in London at Lincoln... Lincoln's Inn. The Inn Field. Lincoln's Field. In, Inn, yeah. something, something, something. So you must go. He is obviously the architect of the Bank of England. Uh, great architect. And then the the uh, museum before with the Russian artwork is in Moscow. And it's the Tretyakov Gallery. Gallery. Yeah. So somebody wanted you to elaborate about how, what you identify or what you think about um, how the chemistry and atmosphere comes about in a room. So when you're looking through your camera's lens, Mm -hmm. what, I mean, is, I know this is a really tough question. There might not be an answer, but is there something that you can identify that, that is the magic? Um, I think you, I think I feel that when I walk into the room, uh, and it's, and that's when the anxiety begins because then you have to somehow try to transmit that uh-huh. poetry through something very mechanical and cold, which is a camera. And uh-huh. sometimes the most beautiful rooms um, cannot be photographed as beautifully as they are because the camera cannot capture that. Sure. And the light, the light, and and I don't know. It's 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 it, it, it's a tricky thing. It's 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 rooms. I think these rooms that I think have poetry, I think are rooms that have not been thought out to start with. They just happen. You know, what I mean, sometimes something happens. It's like I'm sure sometimes, Alexa, you walk into a room, you see the room, and then. An hour later or a week later, you walk into a gallery, you see, say, an urn, for example, and you see that urn in that room that you've seen it, and you mm-hmm. create the whole room around that urn for, you know what I mean? Uh, it's almost chemistry, you know what I mean? It's kind of a reaction okay, yeah, to yeah, something. Yeah. So I think these rooms that I consider poetic are a bit like that. Yes, of course, they they think, well, the, that big painting should go on top of the fireplace or something like that. Uh-huh. But in a way, it, it happens with time. And I think without much thought about it, it they just, they just. Yeah, the, the, the organic yeah. things are the most successful. And I think. Um, I think you, one of the pictures we showed on 52 Weeks was this wonderful rumpled sofa. And part of the gorgeousness of it was the rumpling. Absolutely. It looked like a fabulous woman had just put her kimono on and gotten up from her nap and was off to do something. Yeah, it's um, that is a very special place. It's it's a it's a chateau in Normandy owned by an Englishman, and uh, he has an incredible sense of color, and he has an incredible sense of editing too. Because sometimes it's about putting things on, and sometimes it's about Thank leaving you. them out. Yeah. And in 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 Andrew's case, he, his name is Andrew, the guy who owns the the chateau. Um, we'll call him Andy. <laughs> Andy, exactly. <laughs> I think he has an incredible sense of editing. He can yeah. edit things very well. So you walk into a room and it's completely balanced, and it just works. Um, yeah. I, for example, cannot edit. <laughs> I want more and more and more and more all the time. Um, yeah, though, I mean, you're, look, at, look behind you. That feels like a nicely edited room behind you. Uh, you know, it looks, there's logic and composition and obviously meaningful personal pieces. The, the other thing that I think, and this is, this is definitely very hard to 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 accomplish with a camera is that I feel very privileged about being in someone else's space mm-hmm. uh, because it's a very intimate th- 
thing that someone letting you, someone, you know, most people I photograph, lots of them I don't know. And the first time I, we meet is when I arrive with the camera and all of a sudden I'm there trying to photograph. So it's, 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 it's in a way, it's, a, it's an act of trust. They're trusting you that you're going to. And so it is an immense privilege to be able to go and photograph things and, and be in a place. And also to me, it's an immense privilege to experience things in places which for someone else may be a regular thing, but for me is I'll probably see it only once. And to do that I, is something that it touches me. I mean, I always um, tell this story that I was again, this is in Moscow and I was in a house um, um, which is, is, is called the, 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 the Sheremetev Palace. And it belonged to a family uh, of the same name. And, and I was the only person visiting the whole house, this, this incredible sort of grand house. And uh, the only, and, and I had this lovely Russian woman who um, was the security, but at the same time she was sweeping the floors of the rooms. Uh -huh. And she would just walk with me as I walked from room to room. And uh, from time to time she would fish out of, she would sort of put her hands in, in, in her pocket and bring out a little candy and give it to me. And, I, <laughs> and so I went to the it's whole a nurturer. House eating candy from this lovely yeah. woman. And at one point we were in this very grand room and all of a sudden I start hearing this noise that I don't understand what it is. And I got a bit scared. I said, what's happening? And I thought the whole thing was falling in. And what it was, was outside of the, uh, of the, this palace, there is this um, Russian Orthodox church and it was midday and it was just the bells kind of yeah, going yeah, yeah. crazy. And I thought, after I realized that, I thought, God, this is actually so nice because whoever lived in this house in the 18th century experienced that all the Heard time. Heard those so same bells. Like, oh. yeah. But for me, being a visitor, I'm probably a one-time visitor, it was so nice to experience that, which had been experienced by so many people before. And that's what I love about going into people's houses and seeing how they live. Um, I'm going to let you go soon because I think we'll be cut off in four minutes, but I could talk to you forever because you're such a poet and you, everything, every way you, the way you describe things and express yourself is just so yummy, but um, <laughs> it is so yummy. It's a company who inspires me. It's, oh yes, clearly. Um, somebody has asked who are emerging interior photographers that you enjoy and admire. And if you forget somebody, don't worry. But who, who's on your mind these days? Well, I, I really like the work of um, Stephen uh, Kent Johnson, I believe he, he's amazing. He works for a lot, he has a lot of work for um, AD. Uh -huh. And um, a few days ago, I got this book and he's not an emerging photographer. He's actually a grand Established, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's um, Simon Watson, and he just came out with an amazing book, which is a compilation of his work for the last 20 years. And it's, re it's one of those things that, you know, you say, I'm sure you, I'm sure you walk into a room sometimes and say, oh, damn it, I wish I did this room, right? Yeah. Oh my well, God, all the time. When I, when I got his book, I got, damn it, I wish I had done this book. It's a beautiful yeah. book. Um, I would recommend that everybody gets it. So they should buy Natalie's book that just come out yeah. and Simon Watson's. And, then and that's some, called Babar? What is it, that? It's the called, I don't, it I think is, it's called Simon Watson or something. No, no, I'm talking about Natalie's book. Oh, it's called Decor Barbar. Decor Barbar. And, and then, then Simon I just Watson. seen, and this I'm going to quickly say, quickly, because I just saw it. Um, she was very kind to um, show it to me. Lulu Little has come out with the most amazing book on Rattan. Ooh. And the whole book is not only the history of Rattan, but a compilation of the most beautiful photographs. There um, must be some Agnelli moments in there, yeah? Uh, uh, yeah, there are absolutely some Agnelli moments yeah. there. And uh, it's really, really wonderful. Um, I also recommend that you also get that in your shopping list. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much. Thank Miguel. you. So Thank lovely you. to see you.
I, I'm, you know, if not in person, thank heavens for FaceTime and Instagram. Absolutely. It's so nice to lay eyes on you. Next time, Margaritas. Next time, Margaritas. Kisses. Thank you. This was so much fun. Thank Thank you, Miguel. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.